In this video, I'll be spending 100 days in the Twilight Forest. Throughout this journey, I'll be exploring new biomes, finding all different kinds of mobs, and fighting tons of powerful bosses. My main goal is to defeat every single boss and collect all of their heads. Join me on the adventure to see if I can conquer this fantasy world. Alright, so I spawned in the snow biome and I started chopping away. I then crafted my fine set of tools and got tons of wood and food. As I dashed across the ice, I collected some sugarcane and some poppies which I'll use for something special. As soon as it got dark, I found a cave and what looked to be a ravine. Before I went down, I crafted the most broken item in Minecraft along with an iron pick. And when I went down, things were okay, everything was fine, and I thought that nothing could possibly go wrong. Until I got caught in a cave spider's web and was dying a very slow and painful death. There was also a creeper down here too, and he said something to me that was absolutely crazy. He told me that only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed to the channel, and if they want more videos like this, there was a magical button that they could press. Anyway, I needed to go deeper to find what I was looking for. After some searching, I finally found it. I only found one diamond, but that was all I needed. I returned back to the surface and started making a portal. I threw my diamond in the water and jumped in, entering the twilight forest. Or what looked to be more of a Halloween forest if I'll be honest. The sky in this world looked beautiful. The trees were nicely curved and the forest had a warm yet spooky feeling. As I ventured out, I found some other biomes. The snowy biome had a barrier around it, so I went with the other option, and I believe that this was the actual twilight forest biome. This place really felt like a fantasy world in itself. Surrounding the forest were firefly jars, which was an interesting source of light. Hiding in the flowers, I found a wild deer that ran away when I followed him, and I thought it was kinda cute how he kept looking back at me as I chased him with an axe. I also found this blue kobold, and later found a few dwarf rabbits. This made me really excited to see the other creatures in this biome. While exploring, I found this huge tower that I wanted to invade but couldn't because of the barrier. I guess I have to unlock it first. It seems like there's a lot of places to unlock. As I look for a place to set up camp, I discovered what looked to be a hedge maze. I entered the maze and didn't know what to expect. And as I did, I discovered a hedge spider that guarded a chest with some loot. It seemed like the maze was empty of mobs, but as I snooped around, I heard this. I expected a ferocious monster, but it was just an angry dog. Nothing to be scared about. However, just like in the cave, when I thought everything was fine and normal, it wasn't. I got swarmed by a pack of wolves that got me down to three and a half hearts. Not the most pleasant experience, but I did end up finding a diamond in one of the chests. I grabbed that diamond and headed out of the maze. At this point, I searched deep into the forest for a place to settle down, and that's when I found this run-down little cottage. However, when I met the homeowner, he wasn't too pleased to see me. He kept firing his spells at me, but that didn't stop me from taking over his land. I destroyed his spawner and found a secret room underneath his house. Nothing too crazy, other than a chest, but when I tried to open it, I heard some TNT ignite and I thought the house would explode. But, it was just a prank and the chest was full of goodies. As I organized my chest, I heard a skeleton around. I soon realized his family was still upstairs and I immediately went to take care of them. Look, I get that they're just kids and they're a little upset that I took over their home, but they need to understand that sharing is caring. After that, I planted some sugarcane and some wheat. While doing that, I found the obsidian tower by my home. Didn't know why I was here, but I was happy to take the lapis block on top. After killing the skeletons, I felt a little lonely at home, so I tamed these dogs to keep me company. Hopefully, they won't try to kill me like the ones in the maze. As I headed out, I came across a forest raven that dropped its feather when I killed it. Maybe this can be useful later on. Time passed by, and I wondered if there were any vanilla mobs in the forest. I thought I found a regular sheep, but it turned out to have horns and was blue. I killed the sheep and wanted to explore this snowy terrain, but I didn't want to go through that barrier. Along the way, I found an opening to this huge cave in the snow mountain. I was curious to see what kind of monster lives there, but I'm definitely not ready for it. Despite that, I'm still eager to see the bosses in this world. As I say that, I stumble upon a huge wall that shaped the perimeter of something. Couldn't find an entrance, so I climbed up and I initiated a boss fight. As I tried to find the boss, he popped right out of the corner and knew exactly where I was. He lunged towards me and broke all blocks in his path. He moved and attacked at fast speed. Taking down this huge serpent would not be easy, but I was more than ready for the challenge.
Apparently, all I needed to do was use my shield against him. I guess this proves why the shield is the most OP item in the game. Upon defeat, I was rewarded with Naga Scales and a Naga Trophy. Now I have what I need to start my collection. Now with the Naga Scales, I can actually make some pretty decent armor. I made some Pro 3 leggings and felt like I accomplished a lot that day. Soon, I left home to go on a mining trip and I found this pitch black forest. I had no idea what was lurking in the dark, so I left it for now and played it safe. I also found this gigantic tree in the circle of all these other trees, so I thought I'd take a second to check it out. It took me a while to climb these vines up to the top, and it didn't help that these cicadas buzzed through my ears. There better be something good up here. Sadly, there was nothing. Nothing at all. All except for the beautiful view of the tower I found earlier. Maybe I should go explore that. But when I came down the tree, I found this dome-shaped hill. I climbed up to the top and started digging down. I dug deep enough to hear some whiny laughter. I found these red cap goblins and they seemed sweet at first but quickly turned sour when I got near them. These little guys did a ton of damage so I had to take them seriously. While I mined some glowstone I could still hear their eerie laughter which very much disturbed me. I then began to realize how oddly structured this cave was and the unusual amount of mobs. I ended up finding a chest that wasn't special but did have some decent loot. I did however find some transformation powder which I had no idea how to use but seemed cool to have. Later I went down into another cave to pick up some torch berries. With the torch berry, a raven feather, and glowstone dust I can craft a magic map focus and that combined with paper can give me a magic map. With this map I can finally locate all the different biomes, structures, and bosses in the game. I decided to travel to the skeleton face on the map and it sent me to the large tower I found earlier. The barrier was gone and I guess it was because I killed the Naga back at the courtyard. I broke in and found a bunch of bookshelves and a little bit of loot as well. I explored a bit deeper and found a bunch of skeletons waiting for me and things got a little chaotic. I was cornered into this room and was surrounded by mobs and what appeared to be a floating book. I got out of there alive and headed up the staircase that led me to some spawners and even more skeletons. It felt like I had to deal with more mobs and spawners as I made my way up. Hopefully it'll all be worth it in the end. The staircase felt like it never ended and I was just dying to see what was at the top. But sooner or later I could finally see the top floor. I wanted to be prepared for what was to come so I made a new shield. I climbed up the final steps and encountered the Twilight Lich. This guy cloned himself and started shooting enderpearls at me. He was able to teleport and took half my health with one blast. I retreated down the staircase and forgot I had to deal with the other mobs as well. However, my retreat did not stop him from coming after me which became an even bigger problem. I also did not expect his clones to do massive damage. I was fully armored, yet their attacks still got me super low. I came back to the top to fight the real lich and I somehow managed to remove some of his HP. I figured out that his health bar above was actually his shield health bar and I needed to get rid of that so that I can actually attack him. However, I came across a major problem when I ran out of food which meant I ran out of regen. Luckily, I did have some rotten flesh from all the zombies I killed earlier. When I got rid of the Lich's shield, he summoned these zombies on me and I could hear him teleport like crazy below the floor. I had enough of this Lich and thought it was about time to put an end to him. He was pretty terrifying to fight up close so I made sure to keep my distance and after one last bow shot, I finally beat him. That was a lot harder than I thought it would be. Upon defeat, I was rewarded with the Lich Trophy and a Zombie Scepter which now meant that I can have my own army of zombies. This was the best scepter that I could ask for. I didn't have enough regen to fight all the mobs on the way down so I relied on the zombies to do the work for me. The scepter did have a limit though and I completely ran out of food. In this scenario, my best option was to just sprint all the way down, avoiding all mobs and to get out of here ASAP. I eventually found an exit and made my great escape from the Lich Tower. Eventually, I made it back to my cozy cottage in the woods and realized I had a shortage of food. If I was going to fight more bosses, I can't rely on rotten flesh anymore. So in the next few days, I figured I'd start making farms. However, I had no idea if I wanted to make a wheat farm or if I just wanted to trap some chickens into a pit. As I tried to figure that out, I remembered that I still had the transformation powder that I found back in the hollow hills, so maybe I can make some use out of it. I thought I might just test it out on this deer, and when I did, I was absolutely shocked to see it transform into a cow. 
I found another deer close by and transformed it as well. Apparently, it transforms mobs in this world into vanilla mobs, but I wouldn't expect a deer to be equivalent to a cow. Nonetheless, I still brought these cows home and trapped them in a cage for all of eternity. I may have ruined the lives of those poor deer, but that won't stop me from experimenting with the transformation powder. While I was home, I thought I'd take a couple of days to just fix up the house while I wait for my cow farm to grow. I actually liked the druid home the way it was, so I only made minor changes such as getting rid of the mossy cobblestone. I also made a paved path with regular cobblestone, and I used the mossy cobblestone that I got rid of to make some stairs which I would use to surround the perimeter of the paved path. After remodeling, this home looked pretty good in my eyes. It definitely looked a lot better than when I found it a while back. I'm sure the druids would be proud to see this, but then again, I did have to kill them for it. Moving on, I killed all the adult cows in front of their children and prepared for my upcoming adventure. I then pulled out my magic map to see where I would travel next. For now, I kind of just wanted to stick to the twilight forest biome to make sure I explore everything. Pretty soon, I ended up heading towards what looked to be a large hollow hills and I was pretty intimidated when I looked at the actual size of its dome structure. When I climbed up the hill, I encountered a twilight wrath that was able to move through blocks and attack me. After killing it, I had a feeling that he didn't want me to go down there. However, I went down anyway, completely ignoring any warning given to me. Hopefully I won't regret it. So far, everything was good, nothing was jumping at me just yet, until I found this beetle that spewed flames at me. I have to say though, that is a pretty cool mob, but definitely not a cute one since these guys do an absurd amount of damage, especially when they're grouped up. They were so strong that I had to rely on my water bucket to save me, or else I would have been fried. Now those beetles were a problem, but I had an even bigger problem when dealing with all these mobs. I thought the fire beetle was annoying, but now there's a slime beetle that runs away when I try to hit it. Despite all that, I came here for the loot, and in a chest I found a bunch of steel leaves and an ironwood pickaxe which I'm hoping is good news. I know the pickaxe is better than my old one, and it even has enchants, but I'm not sure about the steel leaves. Now, I know I speak for many when I say that skeletons are the worst mobs to deal with, but the nice thing about them is that they always cause fights between mobs. I feel like the world would be a better place if all mobs could do that. I'd be a very happy man if these cave spiders fought themselves. After some searching, I found another chest that had an ore magnet inside. I tested it out and realized it brings a bunch of ore from the ground. This was definitely a really sick item and I felt like I could even find diamonds with it. I was pretty satisfied with what I found and felt like it was time to get out of this place. The mobs here were definitely getting out of control and I didn't want to waste all my food by fighting them. As I attempted to leave, this one beetle was mad that I forgot to say goodbye so I made sure to take care of that real quick. I eventually made it to the top and was back to exploring. Soon, I came across what looked to be a swamp biome and another dome shaped hill but this one looked a bit different. I was shocked to see that this cave had openings from all sides and some sort of broken cage in the center of it all. Apparently the cage led to some room down below and I was curious to see what I would find there. Surrounded me were pathways and I soon realized I was in some sort of maze. This place was so mysterious but I was thrilled to explore it. However, that thrill turned into fear when this random cow wielding an axe charged at me with full speed. Not only were these guys terrifying, but they also did insane damage, so I had to be careful. A lot less scary than the minotaurs were the maze slimes, which were regular slimes that looked like the maze walls. I tried looting the room with the minotaurs, but there was still one left, creeping around the corner, waiting to ambush me. When I came back to him, the minotaur broke my chest plate. I managed to get away and I luckily found out that I can use the steel leaves to make another chest plate. This one was a lot better than the old one. I may have solved the armor issue, but I still had no idea how to maneuver through this maze. It's times like these where I wish I could have a map to help me navigate. Now, the scariest thing about this maze is that you'll never know what's behind each corner. A part of me says that I should take on those beetles and walk through that hallway, but the other part of me says that it's a bad idea. Honestly, coming to this maze was a bad idea. But, here I am, slaying angry cows. On the bright side though, I did find a double chest behind these iron bars containing ironwood ingots and a bunch of maze wafers. I also came back to the room with the minotaur spawner and got a steel leaf helmet. In another chest, I was able to find steel leaf boots as well as a pickaxe. The armor was sick and it was definitely a big upgrade. Later on, I was beginning to run low on torches, but then I found a room with torches all over the walls. That was honestly such a huge relief. I may not have to worry about the darkness anymore, but I still don't know where I'm going. 
To make matters even worse, I came across a new type of beetle. I didn't know what it was capable of, so I made sure to keep some distance, but then it just grabbed me and I couldn't move. That was a lot scarier than I thought it would be. Almost as scary as when I found this double chest that actually turned out to be a trap. I heard the TNT ignite and it exploded the chest and all the items along with it. I found another chest and this one was tripped as well. I guess I have to be more careful and not trust anything in the maze. But at the same time, I also can't resist opening these things and stealing all the goodies. One of the best items I get out of these chests are the steel leaves. And I have a feeling I'll be needing them a lot to make new armor and weapons. After a while of exploring, I found another iron barred cage which was an entrance to a dark and mysterious floor below this one. This was similar to the one I found back at the swamp. The one that got me stuck in this maze. I jumped down and as soon as I did, I got ambushed by this minotaur with a shiny gold axe. I nearly died trying to take him down and he didn't even drop the axe. Although, I did learn to be more careful in this new maze. As a matter of fact, I learned to rely on my water bucket when dealing with the minotaurs. As you can see, I would have been dead right now if I didn't place the water down. I mean, just look at these guys. I never thought I'd see the day when cows would try to kill me. I'll definitely be using this method a lot. Now, when I entered the room with the minotaur spawner, I found a chest that contained armor and a maze map focus. With some paper, I could finally craft a maze map. I waited so long to find something like this, and I can't believe I actually got one. Getting through this maze will be so much easier now. Why is this maze so difficult? Anyway, now that I have this map, I actually know where I'm going and I won't get lost anymore. The map led me to this mushroom place, and I wasn't sure what mushrooms had to do with the maze. There better not be any mushrooms here to kill me. Aside from that, I found another maze slime that made me think the wall was attacking me for some reason. I also found another pinch beetle that grabbed me and shoved me in the wall. Not against the wall, but actually inside the wall which almost suffocated me. Forget the minotaurs, the pinch beetles are the scariest mob I've encountered so far. Now according to my map, it looks like there's something behind this wall, but breaking this wall would take an eternity. I'm actually so curious to see what's in there, but I guess I need a specific tool for it. After some exploring, I came across a fenced up area, and I wondered what that was for. Judging by the map, it definitely looked like a special place. I took a closer look, and I think I saw someone holding an axe. I broke a part of the fence, but whatever that thing was came out of the darkness and broke the entire fence to come after me. This thing was fast, and the way it charged at me terrified my soul. I was pretty sure that this was the boss of the maze. I went to go hit it, and this guy took four hearts with one attack. Not just a minotaur, not just a mushroom, but a minishroom. For a brief second, he stopped charging and just exploded. In the middle of the fight, I thought if I cooked up his brethren's steak and ate it in front of him, he'd be a little bit scared. However, that just made him even more furious. Luckily, I was able to catch him off guard, and with just a few swings, I defeated the minishroom. On death, I got his diamond minotaur axe, some of his delicious meat, and of course, his trophy head. I ate the Mief Shroganoff and got an achievement. I looked through my advancements and it said that the meat and mushroom stew pleasantly warms you, enough so that you feel acclimatized enough to venture into the fire swamp. I guess that means I unlocked the fire swamp, but I guess I have bigger issues at hand. I need to figure out how I'm going to get out of this crazy place. What pains me even more is having to use this brand new axe on these slimes. Now, before I get out of here, I want to loot the Minishroom's lair first. I didn't get anything special, but I was able to replace my armor with fresh pieces. After looting the lair, I wanted to go back to that mysterious place inside the wall. I was so curious that I didn't even care if I would take a century to get in there. However, the walls were so hard to break, and I even had to make a new pickaxe after just breaking a few blocks. I really do hope I find something good here. After mining just one last block, I was able to find a room with a bunch of chests inside. In the first chest, I found a maze breaker which looked like an insane pickaxe, a punch to infinity bow, an ender chest, some potions, and an enchanted helmet. I was so happy to have found all that stuff, but it was now time to finally get out of here. After such a terrifying journey, I couldn't explain how glad I was to see daylight again. Securing this trophy took almost all of my patience. After that, I headed to the fire swamp which was actually not that far from the labyrinth I just came out of. I entered the swamp and I saw a bunch of particles in the air which I believe was soot. When I got closer to the center, a three-headed gigantic monster appeared before me, called the Hydra. 
This boss looked tough, so I'm going to have to rely on the infinity bow for this one. I took my first shot, and it didn't even hit him. He then shot these fireballs at me while I continuously failed at shooting him. The fireballs he launched at me were actually able to move when they hit the ground, and they also did massive damage to my health. If I want to survive, I need to dodge as many of them as I can. This boss was definitely a lot stronger than the previous ones I faced. When he fired again, I deflected one of the fireballs and it actually did a decent amount of damage. I hit one again, but then I got on fire and lost half of my HP. I have to stop underestimating his attacks. He hit me again and got me down so low to the point where I could have burned to death if it wasn't for this water. That's when I knew I had to take this three-headed beast a little more seriously. It might be a 3v1, but I'm sure I'll prevail. I was able to get two really good hits in, but then it just started exploding right in front of me. It turned out that he grew another head. Things became a lot more terrifying, but I have to say that is a really cool ability. Now, I may have to deal with four heads spitting fireballs at me all at once, but I honestly just want to see it grow another head. After some time, I was able to deflect a ton of fireballs back at the Hydra, and I got them all the way down to just a sliver of HP left. I was so close to bringing this guy down, and after just one more shot, I finally slayed the Hydra. All I could see was its body causing this massive explosion in front of me, and once it cleared, I grabbed his drops. I picked up his fiery blood, which I can use to make tools and armor. I also got some of his meat, which I was excited to put in my mouth, and I picked up the Hydra trophy as well. And with that, I had just defeated my fourth boss in this world. After the Hydra, I decided to go back home, which was a long journey ahead. It's been a while since I've seen my cows, but I'm sure they miss me. I have to say that it feels amazing to be outside and not stuck in a labyrinth. When I got back home, I was definitely happy to see my dogs, but I also had other business to take care of. I built a little display for my trophies in the basement, and I was pretty proud with my collection, mainly because each of them were really hard to get. Now, onto my next maneuver, I decided to go back to that creepy, dark, mysterious forest I found earlier. I hopped over the river and immediately placed torches down because the forest was pitch black without them. The forest was so dark and quiet that I felt like something could jump at me at any second. Eventually, I was able to find some structure or pathway made up of bricks. I wonder why it's here and what it's doing in the forest. Although, I don't think it's the right time to be asking questions because it looks like I have company. And it looks like there's a little dude with a flail trying to hurt me. Times like these make me really glad that I have a punch bow. I'm not sure why there's so many. I feel like they arrived once I entered this place. Just when I thought things couldn't get scarier, I heard this. This wolf was gigantic, and his growl was not something you'd want to hear alone at night. But it didn't stop there. I now had to deal with a scary looking knight, who I luckily was able to take down thanks to the help of this creeper. Upon death, he only dropped his armor shards, which I hoped to make some use out of. I decided to go inside this structure since I felt it was more safe here than out there. I found this pedestal with a trophy head engraved into it, which I believe is the key to opening this locked area. I quickly followed my path of torches and came back home to grab a trophy head. I came to the brick room and placed the head onto the pedestal which opened the locked door. I really hope this is not another maze, but if it is, I at least have a map this time. The place was extremely dark and I kept my shield in the other hand just in case something popped up at me. In the middle of the hallway, I found a chest containing night metal ingots which got me excited because that meant I could make some new armor. I explored deeper into the stronghold and found what looked to be some sort of meeting slash lunchroom. It made me question what this place is really for, or rather who it's for. What I questioned even more was what had appeared before me in the next room. These long, shadowy, curvy lines seemed like some type of barrier. I was able to go through it, but when I did, I received blindness. It did not seem safe to travel through that, so I headed out. I continued exploring through the stronghold and overheard some creepy laughter while coming across the barrier again. I avoided that and instead entered a room with all these training dummies. The mobs, the ingots, and the training room convinced me that this was a knight's stronghold. Speaking of knights, I was able to find this room that summoned six knights in front of me as soon as I entered. The knights were really just floating armor pieces that wielded floating weapons as well. Judging by the tombstones in this room, I assume that they're phantoms of these once brave soldiers. But they weren't just soldiers, they were the strongest knights in the entire realm, and their damage proved it. 
However, one thing I noticed about these knights is that they never leave their room, which I assume is some type of curse set upon them. Knowing this made fighting them much easier, since there was only just one of them coming after me. After taking a couple down, I decided to enter in and man up against them. However, my bravery didn't last long when I saw one of the knights throwing axes in all different directions. I did blow him up though, but I started to panic once I got cornered at 3 hearts left. I had one more left, but I could have died if just one of his axes hit me. I played it safe and fired at him from a distance. And with one last shot, I defeated all 6 phantom knights residing in the knight stronghold. There was a chest in the middle that contained all their precious weapons and armor, such as the Night Metal Sword, the Phantom Chestplate which was much better than my Seal Leaf one, the Phantom Helmet, a Night Metal Axe that did extra damage to unarmored targets, and a Night Metal Pickaxe. Last but not least, they left me the Night Phantom Trophy, which made me excited to go back home and add to my collection. I almost died trying to get this armor, but it definitely looks like it was worth it. Although, I do want to get more of these ingots to complete my armor set. But for that, I would need a lot more armor shards. I also didn't get that far into the stronghold, and I kinda just wanted to explore it all. Even though the bosses were dead, this place still puts me on the edge since it's so dark and mysterious. Not to mention, I still had to deal with all the creepy laughter from the mobs. There was one mob in particular that made me almost jump when I heard it ignite TNT on itself. Now, the mobs I wanted to look for were specific to the knight stronghold, like this little guy here that's holding a spear. They dropped armor shards, which I can use to make the knight armor. Although he's small, this little munchkin can still do decent damage even with my phantom armor. Aside from mobs, I was able to find this room with a lava floor and a giant clump of stone in the air that had diamonds. I heard some chuckling when I was getting the diamonds, and I began questioning if this was some sort of trap. I was really hoping that laugh didn't come from the suicide miner I found earlier. I soon found the culprit, and I was relieved to see it was just a chain goblin. Now that he's gone, I can finally mine the diamonds peacefully, as long as I don't fall into lava. Thankfully, I got out of there in one piece, and continued to search for more night mobs. While running through the hallway, I was chased by one of the knights, and I forgot that he could deflect my arrows. I didn't want to fight him head on after I learned how strong these knights really were, so I blocked him with cobblestone and fought him this way. Apparently, the giant armored dude was this little guy all along, which I did not expect. Honestly, the stronghold becomes more fascinating the more I explore it. Like I thought that this room I found was a dead end, but it actually had a chest in the middle. I also found another iron caged room that trapped this helmet crab inside. There was another cage past the first one, and there were even more in here. They wore the helmets of the night guards, and I thought that was a pretty cool idea for a mob. They didn't hide anything special in the chest, but they did have a lot of maze waffers, which I'll be glad to eat no matter how stale they might be. After that, I figured it was time to finish collecting my armor shards, craft some knight armor, and get the heck out of here. With the armor shards, I made armor shard clusters, which I would smelt to make some ingots. I wanted to keep the phantom armor, so I only made leggings and boots. And just like that, I looked a lot stronger and felt like an actual knight. Now when I finally made my way out of the stronghold, the fun did not stop there as I had to deal with all the mobs above ground. I was able to find my torch path in the woods, but then I encountered some wolves. There was a whole pack of them, and I felt like they were creeping around the forest, waiting for my return. Hearing those growls made me desperately want to go home. Those mist wolves made me so happy to come back to my normal wolves. When I came back, I placed my trophy down and was a little bit closer to completing my collection. Now, remember when I found that ender chest back at the labyrinth? I couldn't find much use for it, so I decided to break it into obsidian and make it into an enchantment table to enchant my new armor. Using the books I found back at the lich tower, I was able to make a little place for enchanting down in the basement. And after placing an anvil down, I was ready to enchant. I only enchanted the leggings and the boots, since the phantom armor was already enchanted. And after wasting a ton of levels, I was able to make a decent bow, but hopefully I'll find a better one. Now that that's done, there's something I want to get before heading towards the center of the dark forest. To get the item, I needed to visit a new stronghold, and I was glad that there were three others to choose from. I eventually found one in the darkness, and I jumped right in. Now the item I wanted was actually this flail, or block and chain, that this little goblin had. To craft the weapon, I would need night metal ingots, which can be found in chests. This item was a lot more expensive than I thought, since it needed a ton of ingots. 
Just to show you how crazy this weapon is, this block and chain goblin hit me three consecutive times as I landed on a creeper, almost blowing up and losing everything right there. This was an item not to be messed with. Later on, I found another helmet crab cage and I came up with the idea that I could farm a lot of armor shards here thanks to the spawners. I'm pretty fortunate to have this since night metal ingots are hard to find and the fact that this is probably the safest method. However, it's a very slow method and I'd much rather fight other mobs instead. It may not seem like it, but I'm a very impatient guy. Soon, I found the room with the lava pit again and I thought I found a secret entrance down below. But unfortunately, it was just a dead end. I was really hoping it was, but I guess we can't always have what we want. On a different note, I want to show you guys one of my luckiest moments ever. As I combined this Pro 3 book with my leggings, I immediately put it on before the creeper blew up next to me. I was lucky because I didn't even intend to put the armor on in that second. Anyway, I combined all my armor shards into clusters and smelted them into ingots. I then made the two major components of the weapon and crafted the block and chain. There was also a shield that I could make, but I needed tower wood and I had no idea where to get that. That's a bit unfortunate, but at least I get to test out my new weapon that destroys everything in sight. I thought to test it out on some mobs that were grouped up in a corner, and it killed them so quickly at such a nice range. Something tells me I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. As I returned home, I felt a lot more prepared to head to the center of the forest thanks to this weapon. As I got closer to the center, I noticed that the environment was a bit different than before. When I finally made it to the center, I was absolutely shocked at what I saw. This tower was ginormous, and was that a gas in the air? I got closer to the tower and noticed something about the blocks. For the night metal shield, this was the tower wood that I needed. Surprisingly, the wood was hard to chop even with my enchanted phantom axe. That might make getting through the tower a bit stressful, but honestly, I feel like the shield will take all that stress away. The shield plus the block and chain makes me look a lot more awesome than before, and I feel they'll be pivotal when taking on this tower. I entered in through this weird door and I immediately got attacked by this pinch beetle. I swung my axe like crazy to get it off me, and at this point I already began regretting getting into this. Hopefully something like that won't happen again, but knowing this mod, I wouldn't be surprised. Ah uh, yes, another maze. How exciting. But as I say that, I find a chest with a diamond and this cake item named Experiment 115. I wonder what it does. Anyways, this maze wasn't that bad, considering it was pretty short, but I did encounter three iron golems that tried to corner me, and the maze ended up saving me. That could have gone real bad, real fast. I took a better look at these things and realized they weren't iron golems, they were carbonite golems. I was a bit shocked by that, but I was even more shocked at how my torches kept falling each time I placed them. Was I just going crazy? Anyway, I took a look around the room I was in and realized I had to go through this huge obstacle course to get to the top. Thankfully, I had my water bucket ready in case things go haywire. I then pulled this lever and it created a path of red blocks in front of me that turned direction and helped me get to the next platform. And then the blocks slowly started to disappear. I thought this was really cool and was a bit curious as to how this was actually made. Now, the cool thing about these is that they create blocks in the direction that I'm facing. That was awesome, but what I found even more awesome was this block here that was different from the other blocks. It was floating in the air and had all this redstone dust connected to it, and I believe it was the culprit in destroying my torch earlier. I guess it didn't want me to place blocks in here, but I'm glad I wasn't going crazy. Moving on, I reached the top and dealt with every speedrunner's favorite mob, the Blaze. I remember seeing a gas before entering this tower, so I'm not surprised to see blazes. I don't know about you guys, but I actually love fighting blazes. It's just something in their nature that's so peaceful about them. What I don't love fighting are these Carmenite golems, always coming out of nowhere and attacking me. Now as I tried to progress forward, I couldn't open this one door, but then I realized it was a different type of door. I checked the other doors to see if I could find anything to open it. I went up to this burnt up portion of the building and opened a door that gave me this incredible view of the whole tower structure. Looks like I'm not even close to reaching the top. As I moved to another balcony, I heard this sound. I was wondering where it came from and that's when I found two gas staring right at me. I fired shots at them, hoping they would knock me off. 
Later, I climbed up the sub tower and went down the steps to discover a chest with a tower key in it. The shape of the tower key was the same shape as the red shapes on the locked door, which would make sense for me to open it with this. Now, I thought about climbing up to the other towers as a faster way to retrieve the keys, but I didn't want to because of these guys. Just like in vanilla, it's never a good idea to build around ghasts. Normally, you would deal with a couple, but it seems like these guys are everywhere. But the gas aren't the only ones. As I mentioned before, these Carmenite golems are everywhere, and they always pop up in front of me when I least expect it. As I fought this gas, one randomly popped up behind me and started pummeling me down. I guess one positive thing out of this is that I'm making good use of my armor at least. And I'm not joking when I say that. This armor saved me from a creeper explosion that almost killed me. But I climbed up and did find another key, so I guess it was worth it. Now on to more important things, I needed to find out what experiment 115 was and why it turned into a cake when I placed it down. After fighting a gas, I got a little hungry and took a bite out of the cake. A mystery indeed, but I still don't know why. Hopefully I'll find out later, right now I need to deal with these flying cubes that never stop bothering me. On the bright side, they only spawn outside the towers, which I am very okay with. Although, I have no idea how many I'll have to fight at the top. I'm guessing there'll be a lot of small ones, or a lot of medium sized ones. At the top of this tower, I found a third key, which now means I just need one more. There was one last unopened door left, and I was hoping it was here. I crossed my fingers, and there it was, the last key. That was actually a lot quicker than I expected. It was also kind of fun exploring these sub towers, but I really hope I don't have to do it again. Alright, so all I have to do is insert each of them in the keyframes, and boom, we're in. Easy peasy. Well, at least it was until this man came into the picture and gave me a mini heart attack. Also, things became super hairy when I had to deal with the blazes again. Everything was fine until I got ambushed by another golem and soon got cornered while a creeper blew up on me. Just when I thought it was over, I got ambushed again, this time by a pinch beetle. I somehow managed to get away, but as I did, a witch came out of nowhere and poisoned me. The poison wore off pretty quickly, but when I thought things couldn't get much worse, it absolutely did. I had to climb up this entire obstacle course, dealing with gas, spawners, and explosions. I also ran into a problem when I used up all my blocks. Well, you know what they say, desperate times call for desperate measures. And I am not afraid to sacrifice some bookshelves. Honestly, I've done worse. I've used gold blocks to build before. Let me know in the comments your most desperate moment in Minecraft. Anyway, after the parkour obstacle, I had a new obstacle to get through and I had no idea how I would do it. I mean, it had the block that prevented you from destroying things, so my only option is to glitch through the fences? Instead, I decided to do something easier and less complicated, so I took a shortcut. But little did I know, there was another locked door. I can't believe it. This better be the last door or I'm out of here. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll stick around for the diamonds in the chests. I'll definitely need those diamonds to make some armor because mine's about to break. Now as I'm collecting these keys, I start to think about the upcoming boss fight. I'll definitely need to change my armor as I mentioned before, but how am I going to fight it? How strong will the boss be? What are his moves? Will I even have enough damage? These were the questions running through my head. Now, as I grabbed my third key, I was excited because I just needed one more key to open that door. The next chest didn't have a key, but it had diamonds, which I am more than glad to take. And the next chest had two more diamonds, which is awesome, but still not what I'm looking for. Finding this last key was giving me a lot of stress, and honestly, I thought about just ending it all here. However, I did end up finding it, and I was more than happy that I did. I've been scrambling through the tower long enough, and I feel it's finally time to bring an end to it. As I climbed up, everything seemed good, everything felt calm, until I realized I had to go through another one of these. Now, this obstacle is actually pretty easy and fun to do, until pinch beetles decide to jump on top of you in the middle of your jump, and strangle you until you finally kill them. That was by far the most terrifying thing I ever experienced in Minecraft. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, my hand has not left this keyboard since the Knight's Stronghold. It's almost completely numb, which is why I'm scared that I might make a misstep and fall to my death. Thankfully, I didn't. But I did have a skeleton that tried to knock me off twice when I reached the final ladder. Now as I came up, I found two different crafting recipes on the wall, and whatever this thing was. 
I pulled the levers for each of the pistons that pushed the redstone in and it created diamond and gold blocks. As I tried to mine it, I heard this really weird sound come out of it. A bunch of the blocks surrounding it were disappearing and I thought this was the end. I said goodbye to the world, but then this happened. A bunch of mini gas appeared and I took them out one by one. That was crazy, but cool at the same time. I found another one and I restrained myself from using it. Now at this point, I realized I finally made it to the end and it was time for an upgrade. Throughout this journey, I managed to get 20 diamonds, which was the exact number I needed to make a chestplate, leggings, and a helmet. For some reason, my boots made my leggings look enchanted, which looked pretty neat. I enchanted my armor and got protection on everything, which I am very satisfied with. And now I'm ready to take on the final boss of this tower. As I climbed up, I could hear these piano sounds. I had no idea where they came from, but I was curious what they were for. Anyway, I made it to the tippy top and encountered the Urgast. After seconds of fighting him, I knew exactly what I needed to do. I needed to turn down the volume because I couldn't stand the noise he made. After that, I found the room with the piano noises and found a block in the middle that I didn't know what to do with. Meanwhile, the boss was shooting gas tears at me and I also had to deal with the gas surrounding the tower. While I tried to figure out the block thing, I killed these mini gas and when I did, the beat started to go faster. But soon, lightning struck and the Urgas spawned in his minions to obliterate me. The worst part is, they destroyed the pressure plate and I didn't even have any wood to build another one. Now, the good news is, there were other rooms to go to and I would make sure to not let this place be destroyed. A bunch of these gas spawned however and things got a little out of control. I was on fire and they kept blasting me with fireballs which made me go into panic mode. Once I cleared them, the Urgas came by and I stepped on the pressure plate. Apparently that block is used to damage the boss. It did insane damage as well. It took out pretty much a third of the boss's health, which meant that I just needed to use it two more times to kill it. Now, for the block to actually do that, I would need to kill a couple of his minions to charge it up. The beat becomes faster and I just need to wait for him to come here. After shooting him a bunch of times, I realized he turns away when I do that, so I just stopped and waited patiently. And once he came closer, I stepped on the plate. This did really good damage, and he was just so close to dying. I started firing at the gas in the other room to charge up the block. I waited patiently for his arrival and was ready to put an end to this boss. When he came near, I activated the block. After clawing my way up the dark tower, I had finally defeated the Urgast. Upon death, he left a chest in the middle, but I had to clear these gas first or else they might explode it. I opened the chest and found a bunch of carbonite, bottles of fiery tears, and the Urgas trophy. The trophy was easily the coolest trophy I've earned. I mean, just look at it. It's moving. In all seriousness, I was really proud to obtain that trophy, but I also had another problem underway. I now need to get back down, and it doesn't look like there's a shortcut. Not gonna lie, I was pretty tempted to MLG water bucket here. Although, I wanted to first check what these fiery tears were. They're used to make fiery tools and armor, which makes them pretty much the same as the fiery blood I got from the Hydra. Aside from that, as I tried to get down, I was hit by a gas blast and when I fell, I thought I lost everything. But thanks to my feather falling four boots, I live another day. I did make it peacefully out of the tower and I was glad I would never see it again. Once I returned home, I used my last two night metal ingots to repair my block and chain. It's been pretty useful to me, and I feel like I'll be using it a lot in the future. I also put down my Urgas trophy, which made me one step closer to completing my collection. And after admiring these heads, I went on to go do that. But before I head out, I was in the mood for a little cake. I learned that you need redstone to make the experiment work. And once you have the full cake, it will slowly regenerate when you take a slice. Now as cool as that might be, I don't actually need it, so I use it as a decoration. I probably shouldn't be using it like that, but decorating my house is very important. Anyway, it was finally time to visit the biome that I ditched at the very beginning because of that awful snow barrier. Hopefully, it won't be as scary as the dark forest. It was obviously much better than that biome since it was so spacious and everything was clear as day. However, one common mob they shared was this gigantic wolf with the very loud and disturbing growl. 
But this one actually dropped arctic fur, which was used to make armor. The armor may not be that good, but I still want to see what it looks like. Now after running a little bit in the snow, I eventually found this mountain with a huge opening in the middle. I remember finding this exact entrance way back in the beginning and I was super curious to see what was in there, but I was nowhere near prepared as I am now. As I looked through this cave, I noticed it was almost entirely made out of ice. I stepped in and saw that I was surrounded by mobs on each side. These freaky looking dudes were yetis and they weren't even hostile around me. Of all the mobs in this game, I did not expect yetis to be so friendly with me. Now when I went towards the middle, I found a huge yeti that was not so friendly with me. The man chucked ice blocks at me which was quite rude. When I threw my block and chain at him, he went into a frenzy and started throwing ice blocks everywhere. He wasn't just throwing ice around for fun, he was trying to turn me into an ice cube. Although he was annoying, he wasn't really that strong compared to the other bosses. However, he was resistant to bow shots, so I was forced to use old reliable on him. I have to admit, this guy was a bit of a weirdo since there were times where he stopped attacking me for no apparent reason. Although, with just a few more swings, I was able to take him down and he dropped a bunch of goodies. He dropped ice bombs, his alpha yeti fur, as well as his trophy head. This was by far the easiest boss I've taken on, but to be fair, I'm pretty strong at this point. Now with the fur, I can use it to make yeti armor, which is pretty sick, but I'll need a lot more fur. Now, I'm still curious about these guys, and knowing if they're actually friendly or not. I hit a few of them and learned that they don't want any interaction with me. One of them even picked me up and started throwing me down for some odd reason. These normal yetis do drop winter fur though, so I definitely want to kill a lot of them for that. But I'm honestly shocked that they don't actually do damage to you. They just pick you up and drop you down. Although, I'm not complaining since I'm getting all this fur from them. With all the fur I collected, I was able to make a full set of arctic armor. I put the armor on and it looks really cool, yet a bit silly at the same time. I don't know, maybe it's just the helmet. But this armor will definitely keep me warm for the winter. Sadly though, I won't be keeping it on for long because I will be getting that yeti armor. As I followed my map, I noticed something strange in the close distance. It was a gigantic ice wall that stretched out pretty far and wide. But after looking at the map, I realized it wasn't a wall, it was an entire biome within the snowy forest. The ice was completely transparent and I was pretty much able to see the entire biome. That was really awesome to find, and I'll definitely explore it later, but the objective now is to get the yeti armor, which means I'll need to visit the three other yeti lairs. I will do whatever it takes to get that armor, even if it means fighting three alpha yetis, which I guess it does. You guys have no idea how happy I am to have this block and chain. This guy has a snowflake shield around him, so I can't melee attack him or use my bow, which means my only option is to use the flail or otherwise I'd be screwed. Also, when I headed towards the third yeti lair, the flail became really handy when dealing with the winter wolves. When I got to this lair and ran to the middle, the alpha yeti picked me up and threw me up in the air. I'm not sure why, but yetis for some reason love tossing people up in the air. They're also really inconsistent with their emotions. This guy was throwing a tantrum and then it looked like a teacher yelled at him to go in the corner. Honestly, the way these guys move remind me of toddlers when they want attention. But anyways, I did manage to get 18 yeti fur, which means I just need 6 more for a full set. I'm definitely going to need it soon, because these wolves do not fear me in the slightest with the goofy little armor I have now. Anyway, when I came to the last yeti lair, I wasted no time at all, and I continuously pummeled this guy with my block and chain. The highlight of this fight was when he killed his own yeti minion, which I forgot was a thing in this game. Thankfully, I finally got all the yeti fur I needed from that boss and I crafted a full set of yeti armor. This armor was absolutely sick and looked a lot better than my other one. I really like the helmet since it tries to make me look like an alpha yeti. It gives the same amount of armor as diamond, but it gives a lot more armor toughness, it comes with enchants, and it chills attackers. It's definitely the best armor I've found in this mod so far, and I feel like it's going to be really useful when taking on that glacier I found earlier. I went back home first to put some stuff down, and I placed the yeti head next to my other trophies. Looking at these heads reminds me of all the times I was so close to dying, and it makes me proud that I've lived this long. Also, I found out what the ice bombs actually did. When you throw an ice bomb, you're throwing an ice block on the ground that creates a sheet of snow around it. I decided to throw all of them around my house in hopes to enhance the outside appearance. If you ask me, I think this place looks a whole lot better than before. 
After the decorations, it was time to get back to the objective, which was to go to that glacier. As I got close, I was wondering if there was some sort of entrance to it, but I decided it'd be best to just walk up. When I got to the top, I was absolutely shocked at what I saw in front of me. There was this super big, super tall green castle at the center of the glacier. And as you stood still, the colors were constantly moving, which was really cool to see. Near the castle were these penguins, and they looked pretty cute and friendly, but after all I've been through, I feel like they could turn on me at any second. Now as I tried to enter the castle, I noticed a whole bunch of mobs were sitting at the entrance. Why were there so many mobs, and why were there so many mobs at the entrance? Usually the entrance is the last place you would see a whole bunch of mobs clumped up together. I guess this is a castle, and all good castles need lots of guards to protect the royalty at the top. After defeating them, I entered and noticed the whole room was super green. To me, these blocks look super cool, and I thought about collecting them when I leave. As I climb up the stairs to this castle, I encounter another group of guardians. I saw that these guardians actually wore armor I previously used and seen throughout this journey. Seeing this made me curious about the story of these ghost guards. Maybe they went through a similar journey like me, but died and ended up here. Of these mobs, there was one I haven't seen before, which were the ice cores. They weren't really that special since they only threw snowballs at me. Now I have to tell you, the best thing about this castle are the narrow entrances to each room, making it so I can use them as choke points for killing mobs. The loot however may not be the best, but I still plan on using these aurora blocks for later. As I cleared more and more of these snow guardians, I was getting really eager to see the majesty at the top. I should probably be more scared than I am right now, but at this point I feel like I'm stronger than any boss. I broke some ice and found a spawner in this room that was floating in the air. I towered up and encountered the Snow Queen. She flew in the air with ice blocks around her and summoned ice crystals. I tried hitting her, but her ice blocks acted as her shield. I tried shooting her, but that also didn't work. I thought for sure my flail would work, but it didn't. Seems like I have a huge problem on my hands. All of a sudden, the Snow Queen smashed the ground with her ice shield and created a bunch of snowflakes around her. However, in this state, I was actually able to hit her and I got a lot of good damage in. She stopped the snowflakes and kept trying to get on top of me to use that special attack again. She eventually used the attack again, but this time went all the way down to the previous floor, which actually gave me a good angle to hit her. My shots did a lot of damage, and I was so close to killing her. I also found out that I just needed to hit her above the shield to do damage. I got her so low, and with one last chop, I finally defeated the Snow Queen. When I picked up her head, I actually completed two goals by doing that. She also dropped a Seeker Bow, which will probably be good considering it was dropped by a Snow Queen. Getting this head was a bit of a mission, but I was glad I was able to do it. Now it's time to get out of here and say goodbye to this castle. But first, I want to test out this Seeker Bow. Apparently, I don't even need to aim at the targets to hit them, which is very nice. If you can't hit your shots, this is the bow for you. Anyway, it's time to get out of this biome and go back home. While I was here though, I thought I'd just have a little more fun using my new bow. I waited for so long to get a different type of bow and I can't believe I actually got one. After a while, I finally made it back home and I added the Snow Queen trophy to my collection. I looked through my achievements and saw that I had completed most of the main quests. The quest that I just finished said, Slay the Hydra, Urgas, and Snow Queen to clear the acid rain and embolden yourself with the Highlands. I guess I'm going to the Highlands now. Now, before I go and do that, I wanted to decorate the outside of my house with the Aurora blocks from the castle. I placed all of them down, and to me, I think it looked pretty nice. I honestly love these decorations, since they give my home a bit of a Christmas feel to it. Now on to more important things, I needed to get ready for my mission. I did a level 30 enchant on my bow, and I didn't get the best enchantments, but at this point, it doesn't really matter. I also used my fire blood to make a fiery chest plate, which gives a little more armor than the yeti gear and it burns attackers. Even though it didn't match well with the rest of the armor, it still looked pretty good on me. I also did a level 30 enchant on the chest plate and got some really good enchants this time. In terms of armor, I am officially as strong as I can be and I can now burn and freeze mobs at the same time. Now as I left my home, I used my map to find the location of the highlands. I explored a new area on the map and found a huge hill, which I guess was it. I climbed up the hill and was curious to see the enemies waiting for me. I searched around and didn't find a single soul here. All I could find was this weird soil on the ground and an area next to the hill where I took damage from touching this thorny wood. 
The wood wrapped around the mountain and I was curious as to how you would get through it without dying. Meanwhile, I still wondered why the soil was here. But then, I looked up to the sky and saw this huge cloud area that was directly above the soil. That place was super high up and I felt like I needed something to help me get up there. As I tried looking for clues, I found this cave that had a strange block inside it. As I got closer, I thought that this block would give me ore, but it was a troll sign block that didn't craft into anything. It had the word troll in its name and the blocks were everywhere so I figured that this was a troll cave. I'm really hoping that these trolls are friendly. Anyway, I explored deeper into the cave and found this area with a huge obsidian cube that had this barrier around it. I took damage when I got near it which meant that I needed something to help me mine it from a distance. As I tried to figure that out, I got ambushed in the dark and started panicking when I saw this hideous creature attacking me. I got an achievement when I killed it and realized I just encountered the cave troll. These guys attacked me when I least expected it and were quite annoying. I took care of them and found more obsidian in this cave. I found another obsidian cube and this one was a lot smaller than the previous one. This one also didn't have a barrier around it, so I mined the obsidian and found a chest. Inside the chest were these magic beans, as well as this uberous soil. I actually remember seeing the soil on top of the highlands and I figure I'm supposed to use these beans on it. I came to the surface and I placed the magic beans down, which made this gigantic stairwell up to the clouds. That was one of the coolest things to happen in this world. I then proceeded to climb up this massive stairwell. As I climbed up, I was wondering what was actually on top of the cloud. I was hoping that there would be some really good loot up there. Or maybe there's a bunch of crazy monsters waiting for me. I finally made it to the top and was excited to see what I would find. I reached the surface of the cloud and was completely baffled at what I saw. There were all these giants that surrounded me and they had the same skin. They also had huge armor and huge weapons as well. They were pretty tough opponents but somehow my secret bow was able to two shot them. It turns out this bow was a lot stronger than the default one even without the enchants. Now as I killed these giants, they dropped their swords that looked absolutely massive in my hand. Although they did good damage, using them was not the way to fight the giants. These guys came at me non-stop, so I summoned my last remaining zombies to distract them. I'm really glad I did because these zombies saved me time and time again and made things a lot less scary. I then picked up the giant's pickaxe and held it in my hand, which looked absolutely ridiculous. When I tested it out, it broke a bunch of blocks all at once, which was so awesome. Now that I have that pickaxe, it's time to get the heck out of here. I climbed down the staircase, satisfied with this giant pickaxe in my hand. I enchanted the pickaxe and the sword and felt 10 times more powerful. I went back to the troll cave and played around with my pickaxe for a bit until I was rudely interrupted. These trolls may be ugly, but they're really good at attacking. I was having fun breaking blocks, but these guys just had to ruin it. Anyway, I thought I'd test out my pickaxe to see if I could break this huge obsidian vault. Since the pickaxe was so big, it allowed me to mine outside the barrier, and I also assumed that it would break a bunch of obsidian as well. And I was correct, because it did just that. I saw two chests in the vault, so I cleaned out my inventory a little bit to make room for whatever treasure was in there. But what I found was not what I expected. It gave me this lamp, and I got the I wish for more burning achievement. But after reading that, I quickly realized what it was used for. The lamp would burn the thornwood I found earlier into ashes. This was just what I needed because now I can progress to the next biome without taking any damage. And once I moved up the mountain, I found what looked to be a huge white castle in front of me. Now, maybe it's because I'm bad at parkour, but I just could not get up this mountain for the life of me. It's weird to say, but the structure of the mountain was a bit complicated and it didn't help that I couldn't place or break blocks either. I eventually got up though and was just amazed at the beautiful architecture that was in front of me. This place was called the Final Plateau, so I guess that means the final boss is here. Now this place was super cool and all, but there was just one problem and it was that I couldn't find a single entrance. You would think that a place with a lot of buildings would have a lot of entrances, but you would be wrong about this one. Also, not a single block in this biome was breakable, making things quite difficult. This biome was so strange to say the least. I eventually did make it inside though by using these really cool pink doors that had a strange effect when you opened them. While I explored this place, I found a giant fenced up box in the center and I thought that had to be where the final boss was. It took me a while, but I finally made it to the center of the building and I started to get goosebumps. 
I entered and soon found a new mob that poisoned me when I looked at him. It was some type of ghost and it kind of reminded me of the ghost I found back at the Hollow Hills. That was strange, but definitely not as strange as what I'm about to show you next. I went down the super long staircase thinking that I might find even more mobs trying to kill me, but what I actually found was a lot scarier than that. Here in this basement, I found all these rooms that were pretty much empty, with the exception of a few adherents. The rooms had writing all over their walls, and I was just so curious as to what was supposed to be in them. Maybe they locked people in there to experiment on them. Or, maybe those were the rooms where they created all the bosses in this world. Now I thought that was strange, but things got even stranger. I found this Harbringer cube, which I assume is a cube that brings horror. And I found a structure within the building that had a bunch of different symbols on it. What did the symbols mean, and why was this here? These are the questions I will be asking myself for the rest of my life. Now I made it to the final boss arena, and I was quite scared. The bosses in this world were pretty hard to deal with, so obviously this guy must be 10 times stronger. I took a deep breath, and I chopped the fence down. Only to find out, there was no final boss. Apparently this mod is still being updated, so there's no final boss currently. I was quite disappointed when I found this out. I even thought about just ending it all here. But I decided to not do that because I still had my main mission to complete. Hopefully one day, I'll find out what those symbols mean. But right now, I need to find out where the other boss is so that I can collect his head. After looking at the map, I was really proud that I was able to discover most of the world. Now, I eventually had to make a new map because I couldn't find any new biomes in the other one and I crossed that map border. In this quest, I traveled to biome after biome to hopefully discover a new land. After running through the swamp, I was able to find a biome I've never seen before. This was the Enchanted Forest. This biome was absolutely gorgeous. The grass and the trees had such a variety of colors. Soon, I found the stone monument at the center of the forest and the questing ram as well. I was so close to turning this guy into lamb chops, but he didn't actually attack me. Who would have thought that the final boss I'd encounter was actually peaceful towards me? Moving on, I found this dispenser that gave me light grey wool. I clicked the button a bunch of times and it gave me even more wool, but in different colors. In my mind, this had to be for the ram, and when I gave him some, he gained a stripe on his back. I gave him the orange and light grey wool and he got those stripe colors as well. This was a sign for me to make some shears and get some more wool. The ram wants different colored wool, and thanks to the bighorn sheep, it's a lot easier to do that. I soon came back to give him a lot of wool, but he just wasn't satisfied enough. I did notice that his torso grew in length with the more wool I gave him, which was pretty awesome. But I still have a greedy ram to deal with, and I guess he needs more wool. I took a long time to find all the wool I could possibly get for him, but he still wasn't satisfied. There are 16 different colored wool in Minecraft, and I had 15 on him, so I was missing one. I looked at his body intensely, thinking of the color I was missing, but then I realized I had the gray wool all along in my hotbar. I finally got the questing ram achievement and he dropped a ton of valuable items. But most importantly, he dropped his head, the last head I needed for my collection. He also dropped his crumble horn, which destroyed blocks and made a lot of sheep noises. Now, the questing ram gave me a lot of good stuff, but he did make me go through a lot of pain trying to get all that wool for him, so I decided he needed to go. Afterwards, I made the long journey back home and I placed the trophy in my collection. And with that, I had finally completed my main goal of defeating every single boss and collecting their heads. All of these trophies are so important to me, since they all have a little story to them. It may have been tough, but I finally did it. This is one of Minecraft's best adventure mods, and if you want to play it, check the description. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, I appreciate all the support you leave on this video, and I will see you next time.